up. We're live. Hi, y'all. Seven o'clock. All right, so I'm going to get you started. Uh, we'll give it a minute for people to come. Oh, hi, everybody. Okay, so tonight, this is our piece before I flip my camera. Okay. Okay, Emily. You're on. I'm not on yet. Well, I am on here. I'm going to flip over to the library page. And I'm going to flip you over so that we're all ready. And then I'll be able to pull up comments and everything else. Okay, so here we go. Welcome, everybody. I'm glad you're all here. And let me flip you over. I'm going to talk while I'm doing this. And let me just say, when I'm done, I will um, have a recorded video. So it will be on the library website. So you can always go back and you can keep working on it. Okay, so I'm going to flop you over. All right, let's go. So hopefully you can see me because I haven't been able to pull you up yet. I have such a hard time with this. Uh, let's see. All right, so I'm going to show you a couple things. Hopefully I'll be on. And... Let's see. Hopefully, you can see what I'm doing. Let's see if we could do this this way. Oh, there you go. We're live. Okay. Turn that down. Okay, ready? I can't set it up until everybody is on. So just bear with me. Okay. So, welcome. Thank you for coming. We're going to move a little bit quickly tonight because we're going at an intermediate pace. But like I said, it will be on the library website after the fact. So you'll be able to view it over and over and over. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create our sky. Okay, which is really pretty simple. We're going to paint white. And we're going to put out a little bit of shoreline which is a light blue, great color. Now we've already based our piece white. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pick up a nice amount of white and I'm going to, and you have to, when you do this, you have to work pretty quickly. I'm gonna paint white and I'm going horizontally because my sky is horizontal, okay? go pretty far down. I'm going to pick up shoreline on the same brush. I didn't clean it. I just picked up some blue and I'm going back and forth. Now, if I keep going back and forth just enough that I still have the white and the blue in there. Do you see that? Okay. Now, it will give me, and now I'm picking up a little bit more blue because I want a little bit more. And that, to me, is a perfect sky. But just say I do this and I have too much blue, which is very possible. Just come in, pick up white on your brush, and just bring in some white and pull it through. Wipe it on your paper towel, your brush, so that you have some, not too much, and you're just pulling. So... I'm going to pick up a little bit more white. And you see how I just took the big blob and I took it right out. You see that? Okay, so that's all we need to do for our sky. I haven't been able to see comments, so just bear with me if I'm not answering you. Last time I was able to. Oh, there they go. All right, so we're going to give it a second. If you have a fan, just dry it. 
Hi, Emily. Let's see. Good girl. Ask all the questions you need, and I'm happy to help. Hi, Melissa. Hey, Jane. Hey, Sarah. Hi, Joni. Aw, thanks, Jane. Okay, so you're just, but to see how I created this guy. Now, something that's really important when you're doing something like this is that you need to have enough blue so that your clouds will show. Okay, so that's important. If you're too white, your clouds will not show. And I'm going to show you how I've come up with the perfect way to do clouds. Now, I've been doing them for years like this. But years ago, I could not find a decent way to make a decent cloud. They had made cloud brushes, and they made all these fun things that I just couldn't, I just couldn't get good clouds. And I couldn't teach good clouds. So that was a tough thing for me. I wanted to be able to teach students how to not stress clouds. Because, you know, we don't want to stress. Okay. So I'm going to flip and flop back between two pieces, okay? So this is dry. So this is where you would be. I'll put this underneath. Okay, if you like me, you have paint all over your hands. So now I want to create my water. Now, on my original piece, and this is just something you should know so that you should know. When I did my original piece, I had my sky and I had my sand. And after the fact, I decided to add the water. So I just plopped in and added water. So I do not have a straight horizon line. But in reality, you should always have a nice straight horizon line. Okay? Um, Nancy, yes, I will hit it to share so it will be there later absolutely hi Marie welcome hi Deb all right so you'll always have a nice horizon line so I'm gonna take a piece of tape and then I'm gonna show you a nice little trick so you're gonna kind of gauge where you want your water to be I'm kind of gonna put my water line somewhere around here I don't get too fussy about it I'm gonna push it down. Now, a really good way to stop paint from coming underneath your tape is go back in with your base coat color. So here is my tape. My water will start here. I'm gonna come in with shoreline and I'm just gonna add a coat of shoreline there. Now what that's gonna do is that's gonna seal it so that you'll have a nice straight line and you won't have bleeding underneath the paint, underneath the tape, sorry. Now if you don't have your base coat color or you used four different colors, which I often do, just use, I use matte medium or you can use varnish. And just get a coat in there, dry it, quick dry. And you'll see that this horizon line looks way better than the one I put in on my original. But I came in and put it in afterwards. So now we'll come in. We'll take the same brush. Just clean it off. We'll pick up some uniform blue. I put on the list Wedgwood blue. If you have Wedgwood blue, that's fine. Um, I'm not sure if it's discontinued. But I know a lot of people are having a problem with it. So... If you look, I use just a little bit. You don't need a lot of paint when you're doing this, so I have just a dime size puddle of Wedgwood Blue, okay? So I'm gonna pick up some Wedgwood Blue. I'm gonna pick up a little shoreline so that I have both on my brush. And I'm just gonna, again, go back and forth. Now I'm gonna go to where the sand is, just so that I have, make sure that I'm hitting it. 
I'm going to pick up a little bit of white because it's just, for me, it's too dark. Do you need to? No. Now, a lot of people say, make sure you dry before you pull the tape. Don't dry. Pull it off. Pull it down. And you see how nice that is? There's no bleeding underneath. I always pull my tape immediately because what happens is when it dries, then you run the risk of when you pull the tape of pulling the dry tape off. So as soon as you're able to, pull it off, okay? That makes a huge difference in your tape line. Let me just dry this, let me see. Uh, <laughs> oh, Linda, I'm glad you found it. Thank you. Jenna, thank you. Thank you all for coming. Sometimes I have a hard time finding the link, too. But we're not far on, and we will have a replay. And on the replay, you can pause and keep going. And I always say, so that I don't forget, if you get stuck, if something doesn't make sense, if you need help, if you need critiques, just private message me and I'm happy to answer you. I'm happy to help you. I will also go through at the end of this class and I will also um, answer your questions in writing so that you can have them in writing in case you miss it. Okay. Oh, you're welcome, Joni. That is true. Quick and share. I'm so happy I get to do these. We're doing these because we're closed for COVID. But it's been a huge success, and we've had a lot of fun with them, and I've been happy to share them. I put them on my Facebook page. They are always on the library Facebook page. I put them on my Facebook page. I tried for two weeks before. And at the end of this class, I'll show you the next intermediate piece. Um, I tried to put it on two weeks before. And in the comments, I'll put your line drawing. Okay, so you can put it out. Oh, that's a good hint, Jane, because I didn't know that. So, um, the line drawing will be there. The only thing I ask is that if anybody's going to paint, just let them print it off themselves. Don't just go distributing them. And please send them to the library's page to watch the video, which would be wonderful. Or share it, because then it goes back to the library. And we all know we're so appreciative of our library. We have a fabulous library. Okay. Now. And if anybody's painting along with me, just know um, that we... I don't know what I was going to say. I got confused. Uh... Yes, Jana, I shared it everywhere so that everybody could enjoy it. So, um, we've been doing them. If you go back into, if you go to the library site and go onto the live tab, you'll see the last few we did live. And if you go onto videos, scroll down to painting. We've been doing them since April, I think. April, May. We, and we do, I do a beginner class, so I go slower and I explain more, and an intermediate one. So I always take my line drawing, which I make nice and crisp, okay? And then I, tra I trace it onto tracing paper. It's much easier to line up that way. So just line up here, take my graphite, shiny side down, you can tape it in place. I kind of just. Now you can do the whole, well, you can do your palm tree, which I'm going to demo on a different piece, but just so you have placement. Your palm fronds, 
I just want those in so that you have the right direction. People tend to get messed up. I know I'm probably not on camera. Get messed up up in here because they lose the direction. And then transfer your sand line. Do not transfer at this point your crab or your coconuts because what happens is you're going to paint right over it. Okay. So I have, which now my palm tree looks like I'm sitting in the middle of the water. And then, oh, you're welcome, Jana. So now I'm going to create my sand. Okay. Sand is pretty easy. You just have to be a little careful when you're using your deer foot. We're going to create a multicolor use. Not this. This part here, the darker part, will be dry brushed in later. But you see, let me show you something else. Okay, so I'm ahead on this one. But you see how it looks like we have little sand grains? Okay? That's all what we're going to do. And then we'll go back in and put in our other elements. So we're going to take out a little bit of desert sand. Am I going too fast for anybody? A little bit of desert sand. A little bit of honey brown. And they're all deco art. Americana paint. Okay, honey brown. A little bit of burnt umber. And then you should have warm white. Now, just an FYI for anybody who listens to me and paints with me. Ah, oh, thank you, Gary. Um, when I say white, I always mean warm white. I don't use titanium white. It's not a color that I even own. So I, I, not other teachers, but me personally, I use warm white. And if I need to highlight the white, I'll use cool white. So if I say white as opposed to warm white, I mean warm white. All right, so the first layer I'm gonna put is my sand color. So I'm going to go into desert sand and I've put just, I'm going to use the white that was already there and I'm going to put out little puddles because you don't need a lot of paint. When you use a deer foot, a deer foot is used dry. Okay. So I'm going to use a dry deer foot. You have, it looks like a deer's foot. The long part is called the toe. The short part is the heel. So I'm going to load my paints on my toe, so you just have it on the toe, there's nothing on the heel, and I'm going to, my brush is straight up and down, and I'm going to tap. This, it's not totally opaque because you'll see through it, you see that? But it is opaque. It's opaque in the fact, I mean, it's opaque in the fact that we're covering everywhere. Okay, whereas we won't in the other colors. Okay, so I'm here and I'm tap, tap, tapping. I reload my brush anytime I need to. I just keep picking up right on the toe. Now you can do one of two things. You can use separate deer foot, a separate deer foot brush for each color, which sometimes I do. It, de it depends on what I'm doing. If I'm tapping black and then I go to white, I use a separate brush. But in this case, we're staying all in the same tones. We're just changing values, so it's okay. So I'm going to take my paper towel and I'm just going to scrub it out. 
it's not all going to be out, so you can still see it. And on the toe, I'm going to pick up Honey Brown, I'm just on the toe. I'm going to wipe a little bit off so that I just have a little bit. Now, my pressure on this is very light. Okay, so look at what I'm doing. I'm very light pressure. What's really important is that you're not this and creating polka dots. We don't want to end up with dots. We want to wipe it off and very, very lightly, almost a feather touch. I'm not every single place. See, I'm skipping spots. Got to remember to keep pulling it over, sorry. And I'm here. So now I've given it a little bit of depth because now I have more colors. I'll wipe it out. I'll pick up a little bit of burnt umber, a little bit, and again, I'll wipe it out so that there's just a little tiny bit on my brush, and I'll tap some in. Now you see how little is in there? I'm not putting a lot in because I don't want to overtake. It's not like the desert sand. When I did the desert sand, I wanted to add color to the whole area. This, I don't want to add color. I want to add depth and I want to add some character to it. Okay, so you see what I'm doing? Okay, so I'm gonna wipe it out. You could do a lot of things this way. You could do trees, you can do bushes, you can do grass, you can do, there's a lot of things. A Little bit of white on the brush, wipe some off. And I'm going to tap some white in. Now what the white is going to do is it's going to bring some of the granules towards us. Now generally I would start dark and work light, but I don't want dark sand. I wanted to start with the sand color and create my granules with the different colors. Now, if you get spots like this, what that is is that, number one, you push too heavy. There's too much pressure there. So I have a whole end of the brush that's clean, and I'll just go in and tap the clean edge and take out those lumps. See that? And I'll take that out, okay? Now, if you can't get it out and you don't like it, go back to the desert sand and just very lightly tap some over and that'll take that out okay and what that and then you can wash your brush because now you've done all your colors so now you don't need your brush so you can clean your brush and put it aside okay i hope you're all braving this heat Hey B, welcome. It's okay if you're late. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're all here. Okay, so now we have, now my original piece was just on a piece of wood that I had. So then I had to do a demo piece and I like to show different things. So I have a clipboard that I bought. It fits perfectly on the clipboard. I'll paint the back. I demoed on the back, but I'll just paint it blue. And then when you varnish it, it's a great, it's a great gift. It's a great, it's a great a lot of things. It's useful. The kids will love it when they go back to school. Okay, so now I'm going to take cobblestone. I'm going to use a number eight flat okay now when I do my base coating I use dynasty's black silver brushes I should have looked from the last class but I didn't they're inexpensive they're in the three to four dollar range they're three something 
379 so the whole entire line is that price I use them to do all my base coating because they're workhorses they're fabulous brushes and for the price you can't beat it so I load my brush in my color and I'm pulling a thin coat see how thin that coat is I know it's not opaque yet the second coat will take care of that but I don't want blobs of paint if you put blobs of paint you're going to get blobs of paint and you don't want that you want a nice thin coat your second coat will yes Gary it is it absolutely is functional um, B I did not use a stencil I used a line drawing so I took my line drawing and I transferred it on paper on, tra on tracing paper and then I transferred it on I did not um, use a stencil okay so now you know and I'll just quickly say it if your paint is shiny it's still wet if it's flat it's dry so now I'll come in and I'll put my second coat and I'm just blocking this in so that I kind of know where it is okay paint some clouds clouds are one of my favorite things to do and they're so easy well they're so easy my way so I of course they're behind the palm tree so we're gonna come in and we're gonna put them in now I'm not concerned about having my trunk in because I can quickly touch that up okay Oh, all right, B, my brush is an eight flat, an eight flat or a 10 flat. Nanette, what can you substitute for cobblestone? Um, you can use fawn. You can, fawn is browner, but it'll work for this piece. You can use pebble. Uh, that's off the top of my head, but fawn is a color that most people have. And... It's, it's definitely got more yellow than cobblestone, but it'll absolutely work in this case. Okay, so we're gonna use a deer foot. We're going to use a little mop, if I have one, which I do. And then just the same as I did with the sky, I used a big old brush. I'm doing the same thing here. So see, my brush is splayed. It's very rare I throw brushes away. I use them to base coat. I use them for corners. I use them in all these, you know, nice little ways. All right. So you need some slate gray. Hi, Vincent. How are you, darling? I can't wait to get back to the library. Hi, Fran. Okay, so we're going to take some slate gray and some warm white. We should do more palm trees. We have lots of people. Um, I am using a half inch deer foot. It doesn't really matter. No, you're not being a pain. I would much rather you ask than not ask. You know me. I have the patience of a saint. You can absolutely ask me whatever you want. <laughs> I miss you too, Vinny. <laughs> you have no idea. We need to come back and you need to just get those signatures. Hey, Joanne. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to take my brush 
and I'm going to wet my surface. Now to make my technique on my clouds work, you have to have a wet surface. I know you can't see, but it's got a nice shine, but it's not dripping. You don't want it to be dripping. Okay, so I'll give it a nice coat. I'm going to take my deer foot. Remember, we have a toe and a heel. The toe is in white. The heel is in slate gray. So can you see that? So my white goes from here to here, and then my slate gray is here. So it's a little bit more white than there is gray. I gave it a quick tap. Now I'm going to come in, and I'm going to tap my clouds. Now, I'm giving them shapes. See the shape I'm giving them? They're thinner on the side. And I'm kind of... Sometimes I go cloud crazy. Now you can work where it's wet. If you're drying, wait and go back. I'm going to do a big one here because I'm not even going to see that one. So um, You can go back and wet it again. Alright, now you're going to take your mop. Now those look pretty, don't they? But they don't really look like clouds. They look like puffs of paint. Taking my mop, I'm straightening the bottom and straight up and down, I'm twirling. You see how I'm creating these beautiful clouds. Now, my suggestion to you is to do one at a time until you've got it down because once they're dry, they're there and you don't want them to be. You're probably not going to see this one because my palm fronds will be there. We'll do here. And I'm here. Now I probably won't see this one and this one. I'll see this one. So, and I do another one here. So again, I have to wet. White on the toe, slate on the heel, and I'm going to tap. The smaller you make your clouds, the further away they appear. The closer you make your clouds, the larger you make your clouds, the closer they are. I'm using almost zero pressure. There is so little pressure on this. Now, if you think you can't see it, just tap right over it. I don't think we're going to see this one in the end. And that's an important thing. Don't stress yourself too much because you really don't know what you're going to end up seeing and what you're not. Not a big deal. My mop is shedding. If your mop sheds, so here I'm shedding, you see that? Just after it's dry, just come and roll it right out. So I'll see this one, I'll see part of this one, I'll see this one, I'll be back. Are we back? I can't tell. Ah! It says I'm live. We're back? Okay. I don't know what happened. Sorry about that. Jane, thank you for calling. I <laughs> couldn't answer. I have my phone and my piece going. Okay. So, uh, yep, my phone, not my computer. I don't see the paint. Okay. So, yes, yes, yes. Video stopped. I don't know why. Sorry. I'm still here. Um, and I was going on and on and on. Yes, the paint color is in the description in the library. Still have video and sound. Are you getting sound? I see you, but I don't see the paint. Okay, let's see if that works. Okay. I think we're okay. Let me see. Okay. Okay, you can hear me because I can hear me. I turn it down so that I don't hear myself. Okay. 
So, let's pop on over. I don't know what happened. Sorry about that. Okay. Sorry, Jana. I don't... <laughs> okay, Nanette, let me just tell you something. I am a little technology challenge, so I have no idea what buffering means. But I'm here, so... All right, so... We're going to use a mezzaluna brush. A mezzaluna brush is wonderful. It is hard bristled. It's a dry brush. You can clean it between colors. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create this texture with this brush. I use this a lot on leaves and such. So I'm going to pick up some burnt umber. I have burnt umber on the brush and I'm just going to pinch. So it's just a little bit on there. From the left hand side, I'm going to pick up, I'm going to hold my brush straight and I'm going to dry brush. Oh, my hand's not in the way. So you see what I'm doing? I'm leaving those texture lines. I want those texture lines. Now something really important about your mezzaluna is you're going to dry brush three quarters of the way through your trunk. So I'm here. You see how far over I'm going? I'm here. And I'm here. I'm pretty far over. Because in the end, I don't want color and color. Wait, here, let me do it this way so you can see. I don't want color and color where they meet. I want them to interlock like this. So I'm gonna come in. It'll take you two or three times. I'm putting pressure on the brush. Clean your brush, pinch it dry, pick up white, same brush, pinch it off. I still have paint on the brush, I just don't have a lot of paint. Come from the opposite side, and again, three quarters of the way. So you see how I'm interlocking into each color I'm not creating a line down the center reload as you need pinch doesn't matter if you come from the top to the bottom or the bottom to the top makes no difference okay so I'm here so when everybody paints this you should post a picture as you know, I just love looking at what everybody paints. So now I look at that and say, oh, too light. So I'll just come in and I'll pick up burnt umber, I'll pinch it off, and I'll do this side again. And I'll go back into the white. You see the difference? So now I just gave it more dimension. Now it should be dry like right away. Because we're dry brushing. It's a dry brush. Is that nice little trunk there? Okay. So now what we're going to do is we have... We're going to play with color. Dark makes the item recede. Light brings the item towards us. So what we're going to do is we're going to shade quick float and I don't go through floating when we do intermediate if you need help with floating uh, last week go in the live section of the library I have a video that I you know we did a live video and I go through floating step by step by step and I say it so many times that you'll hear my voice when you sleep but just go in four steps, wet, blot, load, blend. Wet, blot, I'm in burnt umber. Now, I'm gonna float up the side of the tree. Now, what we're doing is we're giving our tree dimension. So because we're floating dark, we're pushing down, okay? So if you look, I'm kind of pushing the tree down, okay, so that it looks like it's turning. I'm also going to float up this side of the tree 
so that now it's rounded. It's dark on this side, it'll be dark on this side, and it's light in the center. So now I'm down and I'm rounding my tree out. And that's an important, that's an important thing to learn how to do dimension. If you want it to recede, you shade dark, and if you want it to come closer to you, you highlight light. Highlighting is lighter, shading is darker than your initial color. So my values, I'm, I'm valuing in all brown. And now you see how I'm lighter in the center and I'm darker on the side. So my sides are going down and my center is coming up. My center, if I I'm being honest, it's not light enough. So that's an easy fix. Just take your dry brush and just right in the center, just add a little bit of light. There we go. Can you see that? A very, very simple tree trunk. We can create beautiful pieces without ton and ton of work. Okay, palm fronds. I'm gonna use a liner. We're all keeping up with me, right? Again, we're gonna work dark to light. We're gonna start with midnight green. Maybe. Oh, there we go. Midnight green, house of green, medium. On the library website, and I put it on my Facebook too, I usually put it public. But on the library website, they have, they list it, mm, they list my classes, don't quote me, I think it's a week before, and they'll have exactly what you need, the surface, the prep, and the paints and the brushes. So everything is listed there, so you'll always know. Okay, so I'm going to take my liner, and I'm going to pull the center of my palm fronds. They all come from the same part. Now in the end, you won't see that it's creating this nice little point there. Okay, I'm thinning my paint. You always thin paint with a liner. I go from the water to the paint to thin and I'm pulling. I pull out where you place your brush will be the heaviest point. Now this one you can see I didn't have enough water. So just come back and you won't see it in the end. And I'm here. Okay. So now I'm going to pick up my Midnight Green. When you have palm fronds, they pull down. So I'm starting from here and I'm just stroking. Now I'm pulling from the center down. You see what I'm doing? Keep in mind, and this is um, an important fact. Don't put too much thought into it. This is coming from me who overthinks every single thing I paint. This is, um, this is a non-thinking thing. The more you think, the harder it'll be, the harder it'll be, the worse it'll look. I'm gonna pick up House of Green Medium and I'm gonna pull some into that. And I do one at a time because I want it to be wet. I want the paint before it to be wet so that now I'm creating more values of color. And then I'm gonna go into olive green and I'm going to pull olive green. See how beautiful that looks? Joni, I will answer you later. 
and setting up Zoom classes, but the library classes are free. There's a bunch of them on the library website. They're under both tabs, under the video tab, because we were doing regular videos before, and then we were doing um, lives. So we've done some lives. So they are all there and they're all free. My Zoom classes, I'm working on. I'm not real good at that. Melissa, the first color for the palm fronds or the palm trunk? The palm fronds, midnight green, then Hauser green medium, then olive green. And as you go, I just go now and I pick up the next color. I'm not even washing my brush. I'm not thinking too much about it. And I'm just pulling. See what I'm doing? Now when I get to the green, the olive. Are we back? The back. Okay, it's my phone. My phone said it's too hot because I am in my studio and my studio is 99 degrees in here. So warm in here. Okay, let me put you back here. We're still working on palm fronds. Okay, better? Oh, are you all ready to kill me? I keep looking up, so if I lose you, just hang with me. And I think it's just because it's so darn hot. I don't know where you are, but on Long Island, it is, well, it's 99 degrees in my studio. It's just too hot. Next class, I'll stay inside. There's no sound again? No, now there is. Next class, I'll stay inside. Ta-da! <laughs> Next class, I'll go into the office room and I'll do it that way. Okay. I am not going to paint all of these because you're just going to sit here and watch me do the same thing. But after we do the other elements, if you want, I'll go back in and I'll, if we have time, I'll keep painting them. But I don't want you to have to sit here and just watch. Melissa, I have sound. I have sound. So on the replay, I guess it's going to be the same thing. Okay. So these are my palm fronds, which in the end, let me just get this one in. I'm just doing the same thing and I'm following my line. So when I'm here, I'm going to pull here, then I'm turning and I'm going to pull here. And when I'm up here, I'm still pulling away from the, the stick. I don't know what else to call it. I'm still pulling away from, so I'm pulling from the center and I'm pulling out on every one. Same thing here and all the way around. Okay. Aw, thank you, Sheila. I can hear me, Melissa. If I turn my sound Aww, up, thank you, Sheila. I can hear me. So I think it's just you. Okay, so we've got those in. Let's come in, take some country red. And if you don't have, I use country red. I'll tell you why I use country red. Because it's a nice red. That's first of all. But it covers really, really well. So I don't have to worry about coverage. So I'll come in. And I've transferred him on. So if I didn't have him transferred on, what I would do is I would go back and I would lay my tracing right back on. 
and then I would go in and I would transfer. Now, because I need to dry, I'll base here, okay, and then I'm going to come in and I'm going to base coat. Now, I flip down to a two flat. And I'm here, it just goes up. And he's walking in the sand, so make sure when you transfer him on, he's in the sand. Part of his body could be higher than the sand, so it appears that he's walking on the sand, but make sure his legs and part of his body is in the sand because he's walking on the sand. He's a cute little thing, isn't he? He's my favorite thing. You can't see what I'm doing because I'm off screen. Okay, so then I'll take um, milk chocolate. My coconut is milk chocolate, which is light brown. If you don't have milk chocolate, light cinnamon will work. I always use deco art, and I'll tell you why because it's quality paint. I know that people just love to buy inexpensive paints, but what happens with inexpensive paints is you get what you pay for. I mean, that's really what it boils down to. So just keep that in mind when you're buying paints. I sometimes in Michaels, because well, if you don't know me, <laughs> you will. I tend to help everybody. So anybody who needs help because nobody in Michaels ever helps, I stop and I help everybody. And I always explain to them the difference in the quality in paints. And when you go for the inexpensive paints, the paint has a lot of water in it. Oh, thank you, Sheila. He is a cute crab. So the paint with a lot of water in it, the inside of the coconut is warm white. The, when paint has a lot of water in it, it's harder to get a nice opaque coverage. Number one, it'll take you more time. And number two, it will take you more coats. So in the end, your big bargain paint is not really a bargain. Okay? So just keep that in mind. Okay, so you always so I put a coat on my crab of country red. I put a coat of milk chocolate on my coconuts, and I put a coat of warm white on my inside of my coconut. So if you look closely, it's transparent. I don't want that. So I'm just gonna come in and I'm gonna add another coat. By the time I get back to here. I'm dry enough to put another quick coat. And it's so darn hot in here. And FYI, I love the heat. But my studio is all glass, so it's like a greenhouse. It's just so hot. The bottom of your crab's little feet have points. So I didn't have a point on that one. I just took the chisel edge of my brush and gave him a little point. I don't spend too much time making myself crazy over this. You see, let me turn on the light for you. If you see the graphite lines, I have graphite that I can still see that I didn't cover. Don't worry about that. You can take an eraser and take that out. You can use odorless turpenoid, not turpentine. You can take odorless turpenoid and just wipe your whole piece. I will be honest with you, every single piece I paint, I wipe down with turpenoid before I varnish it. It will take all of the graphite that has no paint on it and just take it off. A lot of times, see, like if you see, I have it right here. I might miss that when I'm erasing. So I just take odorless turpenoid. Comes in a white and blue they have little ones, they have big ones. I use it all the time. And I will tell you, 
if you're going to go to the store and buy it, don't buy a big one. I have a decent sized one, but I use it and my students use it. And I'm years, two or three years, and I'm not halfway through it. So it'll last you quite a long time. So just get an economical one for you and it'll last you a very long time. So you see what I did? Okay. Now let's bring our crab to life. Antique maroon. I'm using oh, I'm not using burnt umber, I'm using antique maroon. That's what happens when I do it without looking. Antique maroon. Which is one of my go-to colors. You'll find if you hang and you, we have two classes a month here, so if you paint with me here, you paint with me wherever, I tend to use the same brushes almost all the time. I have, I use a lot of colors, but I tend to use a lot of the same colors also. So, you, you know, you buy your basic brushes with me, you, there's very few you'll have to you won't get 10 brushes every, you know, 10 different brushes every class. Very simple little gal. Okay, so we're going to float. Wet, blot, load, blend. Again, remember what we're doing. We're creating our depth. So we're going to shade the bottom of the crab. And you can see just that. Now, I got it outside the crab. I'm going to take the clean end of my brush and just pull it off. Okay. I'm going to shade the bottom of the back legs. And I'm going to do bottom of both back legs. Now you can also take a Q-tip, damp, and just pull it off. I'm going to shade. now. Make sure you're dry because I floated here. Now, if I went like this, I'm going to pull this right off. So, I'm going to do the front here. And i famous for just plopping around. So, I'm going to go here. And I'm going to go here. I'm, a back, I'm the back of the claw. I'm gonna let that dry for a minute because if I do here or the separation, I'm going to pull it off because it's wet. So the answer to that is I'll start working on the coconut. All right, so now I'm gonna take burnt umber and I plop all over simply for drying time. Do you have to know when you're painting this? Then you can um, pause it and just wait for it to dry. All right, Christina, what color is what? Nanette, before you quit, could you show the stroke you did on the trunk again, please, and the brush? Yes. I will when we get towards the end. Uh, okay, I'm still here. I will, yes, Nanette, I will. Okay, so now I'm going to take burnt umber and I'm going to shade the coconut. Now I want to separate the two coconuts. So the best way I can describe it is we want to push the one in the back down and we want to pull the front one up. So I'm shading on the back one in the shape of the front one. Okay, so I'm here. And then I'm going to round this out so I keep it round. You see that? Then I'm going to come and I'm going to shade the front of this one. This is the front one on the bottom and up this side. Now again, I got it on the inside. I'll just take that out. The 
Crab is painted country red and shaded antique maroon. Okay, let me pop you back. I have to just keep fanning the Okay, so I keep losing because my phone is overheating. All right, so now we're going to do. And I see when it stops. So we're going to do the front of the two middle claws. And now I can because this is dry. And you see how I'm just bringing him to life? And then I want to separate the top shell or the top part of the crab from the bottom part of the crab. So I'm here and I'm, I'm dipping down. I'm from corner to corner and I'm dipping down. Okay, you see that? So now he's starting to come to life. Okay, so now I'm going to take Honey Brown. And I'm going to highlight my coconuts. I'm going to highlight the back, which again, here's the area that's going down and here's the area that's coming up. So you can see that it's dimensional. I'm floating this. If you're commenting, I'm, oh, there they are. Uh, okay. And then I'm going to, again, do the opposite side here. Okay. I'll just wipe that out. This is just a damp Q-tip. Q-tips, and I say this all the time, get them at the dollar store. Um, there's less cotton on them. So while they're not good for your personal use, they're very, very good for painting. We should all have stock in them. I'm here. And I'm there. Okay. So we have beautiful coconuts. Okay, now the inswell, we're going to let that dry. We're going to go back over here, and we're going to pick up some spiced pumpkin. Okay, let's just cool off my phone. Okay, so we're going to pick up some spiced pumpkin, and now what we're going to do is we're going to highlight our crab. Okay. We're going to float. Now we want to bring up the top. Now if you noticed, I didn't put the eyes in yet. I work from the back out. So it's always easier to get this in and then put the eyes in. So we shaded the front of the claw. Now we're going to highlight the back of the claw. Again, we have to wait here, remember, because we're wet and we don't want to pull it off. So I'm here. And I'm here. Okay. If we're not bright enough, just do it again. Okay. So now... When you have a coconut, when you have anything, this looks very flat. So what we want to do is we now want to create this interior here so that you can see that it goes down into the coconut. You see that? So this is a float of slate gray. We're going to be, our paint is going to be towards the outside of the coconut, but I'm off the edge because I want to leave an edge of the coconut so you can see 
that there's the meat of the coconut there. So I'm going to come in. I'm going to float a little tiny bit. Look at how little I have on my brush. Okay. And I'm going to just come in and I'm going to create and I'm off the edge. So you see what I'm doing? I'm creating that I have a top edge and then I have an interior area that goes down. Does it have to be perfect? No. But you see how I just gave that an interior there? That's what you want. Okay. Now I'm going to take, you can take a stylus, you can take the back of your brush, you can take anything your heart desires. Oh, wait, I lied. We have to float the two claws that we didn't float in orange because now I'm dry. So now we're going to come back in with the spice pumpkin and we're going to float here. And we're going to float right here. And then we're going to take our stylus and we're going to pick up warm white and we're going to give him his nice little eyes. And I'm just almost coloring them in. Now a lot of people I see when I teach, they kind of go around the black, but you don't have to. Paint the whole white eye in and then we'll go in and we'll put the black back over it. Hey Sally. Okay, so now we're going to go back to the mezzaluna and we're going to use it a little bit differently. We're going to pick up some burnt umba and we want to set these items, these elements in. So our tree, I don't know if you can see, our tree is in the sand. So on the side, I'm just going to dry brush an odd shape so that it looks like he's in the sand. I'm going to do the same thing with my coconuts. This brush is very, very versatile. And then I'm going to do the same thing with my crab. I'm using burnt umber and I'm dry brushing underneath where he is. Okay, so he's here. And he's here and he's. So now he looks like he's sitting in the sand. See that? The tree looks like it's in the sand and the coconuts look like they're in the sand. Okay. Now, while we give this a second to dry, I will go back and then Matt, I will do this for you now. We're going to take your mezzalina brush and you're going to pick up burnt umber. There's a bunch on there. I pick up, let me put a little bit more on there. I pick up and I pinch so that I have just a little bit. I'm using my brush straight up and down like this. I'm on the tips of my bristle. From the left, I'm pulling. I have pressure on the brush, so you see where my brush lays? My bristles are coming down. I do have pressure, and I'm creating those texture lines. You want those texture lines. Okay, I do this on leaves, I do this on petals, I do this, I think, oh, I'll show you. When, when we're done, I'll show you the next intermediate piece. Maybe I'll show you the beginner piece too. But the next intermediate piece, I use this brush for my flower. Okay, I may want more. Again, load, pinch, hold straight up, and pull and get your texture lines. 
three quarters of the way so that you end up with an interlocking stroke. Okay, so I clean, pinch it dry, load it in white. It is one of the very few dry brushes you can use over and over with different colors. And again, I'm on the tip. I'm using less pressure up here simply because it's a smaller area. And I'm pulling. I'm sorry we've had technical difficulties. Last class I lost signal because we had a, a storm and I lost electricity and I think that's the only bad thing about live. But I can answer you all, so I'm sorry. Bear with me. Technology is not my thing. Painting is. And you see how I'm just pulling. So my colors didn't... Okay, let me do it this way. I didn't do brown and white. I did brown and white. So the colors interlock like this. So now I have a nice rounded and then I'll shade them. Did that help you, Nanette? I hope. Okay, so now I'll go in and I will get a little teensy bit of black. Lamp black. When I say black, I mean lamp black. I changed the name of everything. Black is for me. Uh, I will message you after. The lamp black is always my black, and warm white is always my white. Okay, so I'm going to take my stylus and some lamp black, and I'm going to give him his little eyeballs. And you see how it just goes right over the white? So now he's such a cute little crab, isn't he? Okay. So now we've created the sky. We did clouds my own way. I'll finish the pom poms after. We dry brushed here the trunk. We've created the water the same way we created the sky. My coconut has an interior of the coconut, and it has the meat of the coconut, and it has the shell of the coconut. Be sure when you're painting yours, if you're not painting along with me, that you have, you see this back piece here? You want the back piece of the shell because that gives it the depth. Then I've separated here. Now, if it's not dark enough, you do one of two things. You make that darker, or you take a little honey brown and add it here, and that'll bring it up. And now you can see, you see the back part of the coconut shell. Okay. I think we got everything. I think. We did it on time. You want me to do some more pom-poms? I'll do some more pom fronds. And then I'll show you what we're doing next. Uh, you know what? I'm going to show you a rigger because a rigger is my favorite brush. Another one of my favorite brushes. Very inexpensive brush. It, you can use it round or flat. So, you load. And I'm going to do midnight because. And you wiggle. Just wiggle and it'll give you a nice flat brush. Okay, you can use it flat and create a stroke and then lift and thin so you can work it all into one stroke. I use it for base coating, small areas. I use it to letter. Okay, if I wanted to, and it's a very inexpensive brush, it, it is... Oh, don't quote me. And I sell brushes. Go figure. Um, $5. In the $5 range. Okay. So now I want to use it as a round brush or a liner. And I'm just going to come in. 
and I'm just going to pull using a regular. You can use a liner. This is just a little bit less work. Okay. You see what I'm doing? I'm still wetting. And the good thing is that this brush, which is why I love it so much, you can, well, you know what I should do? I should do this one so you, so you could see how now I'm pulling this way. I'm still following the main line. I'm still following the main line, but I'm pulling out. I know I jump from thing to thing, I'm sorry. Too many thoughts in my darn head. I switch to How's the Green Medium, and I'm here. Oop. Be careful that you don't pick up another color like I just did. I picked up orange, and then I'll pick up some olive green. And all these colors are still on my palette, and they're fine. Now, I use this. This is one of my go-to brushes. I use it for... Oh, I don't want to paint on the back of that. It's a tissue paper background. I use it flat. So if I were painting my crab, I would flatten it, and I would base coat my crab, and I would just have my legs... And see how I can do flat and I can lift it to a thin stroke. And then I could do my front and it's thin and it's thin. You see that? I can just do that with the same brush. I don't have to change brushes. Emily, I shaded them. I shaded the crab with antique maroon and I highlighted him with spice pumpkin. He is somewhere. He is here. And I think it goes this way. Okay. And then I gave him eyes. I did the whole thing in white and then I did black dots in the eyes. Okay. So, I'm only five minutes early. But I will show you this is my beginner class for August, which we go at a much slower pace. It is a piece that I bought at Dollar Tree that looks like this. And I just sand it, and then I paint right over it. You can paint any color. Mine is done in all metallics, because I just, well, mostly metallics. You can do it in any color, any color that makes you happy. You can write whatever you want, okay? so. That's my beginner class. That is August 12th. And then this is here, August 20th, is the next intermediate class. And I did this with um, iridescent paint, the new Enchanted. But I did it with washes, so the, the iridescent is um, optional. And all of this, Nanette, is done the same way with my Mezzaluna. I'm going to be pulling out, and I'm going to be pulling in. Okay? So this will be a fun piece, too. And he's, his body is all metallic. Okay? So two weeks before, I'll post this one on my Facebook. The library usually posts it a week before. Don't quote me, because I'm not really sure. Uh, substitute color for shoreline. You can use Aqua Sky. Aqua Sky is pretty. Yes, it is an amazing brush, Sheila. Amazing. And it's an inexpensive brush. You know, it's one of those. So this is shoreline. So Aqua Sky is a good um, substitute. You can go baby blue. It's not as bright. It's a, a little bit of a duller color, but you can use that. That's fine. And um, I think that's everything. So again, I'm very sorry that we got interrupted so many times. 
it's this heat here and my phone overheating, which is what I use for my camera. And my iPad is for my, so that I can answer your questions. I will go back in, I will answer all your questions. If you have other questions, you can put them here. You can private message me. I'm happy to help you. Um, I don't think there's anything else. So, with that, wait, yeah. up. And I'll say thank you all. I know I look like... But thank you all for coming. I hope you all had fun. I hope you all learned something. Um, I'm so happy we can paint together. And we're off. All right? Uh, where do you locate the other painting videos? Okay, you caught me right before I signed off. So go into the library website. And there's tabs at the top. The tab says... Live... You will find my live videos. So just scroll down. Um, I believe that there's four of them. And if you go into video, the video section, the one before that has pre-recorded videos. So they're there also. Aloha. I love that. You're all very welcome. And thank you so, so much for coming and spending your night with me. All right. Have a wonderful night. Stay safe. Stay safe. Stay cool. And August 12th, I'll be back. If you need me in the meantime, message me. And that's it. Happy painting. Stay creative. Bye, guys.